Let's now take the opportunity to illustrate the concept of interference by taking a look at sample problem 6.10. This is on page 440 in your book, and it reads as follows. Two standard, so full depth spur gears, 20 degree gears have a module of 8 millimeters. The larger gear has 30 teeth, while the pinion has 15. Will the gear interfere with the pinion? So this is a fairly straightforward problem, and it's worth illustrating a couple of things here. First off, we see that these gears have a module, therefore they are metric, or SI, gears. That allows us to very easily calculate their pitch diameter, and that's usually a good first step whenever you're working with any gear problem. As I'm sure you recall, the module is defined as the diameter of the pitch circle divided by the number of gear teeth. We also remember the convention that gear 1 is the smaller of the gears. Often gear 1 is called oops, the pinion. Gear 2, the larger of the gears, is usually just called the gear. So going back to this, we can calculate the pitch diameter of gear 1. It's going to be equal to the module multiplied by the number of gear teeth, which in this case will be 8 multiplied by 15, or 120 millimeters. For gear 2, same calculation. So very, very straightforward. It's also very easy to remember the center distance equation. If you recall, C is equal to 1 half multiplied by the diameter of the pinion plus the diameter of the gear, which in this case is equal to 180 millimeters. Now if we flip back to the notes, leave that momentarily, what we're trying to do is calculate the maximum addendum circle radius that the gear can have in order to avoid undercutting. So that's this formula. Let's go ahead and reproduce that just so we don't forget it. It says that the maximum addendum radius for gear 2 is equal to the square root of the base circle radius for gear 2 squared plus center distance squared multiplied by the sine of the pressure angle. So there's one other thing here that we need to calculate and that's the base circle radius. Remember the base circle radius is the radius that's defined when you first manufacture the gear it's the radius of the circle off which the involute curve is defined. The equation for the base circle radius is equal to the pitch radius multiplied by the cosine oops, of the pressure angle. So that tells me implies that the pitch circle radius for gear 2 is equal to the pitch radius, which is one half of the pitch diameter, so 120 multiplied by the cosine of 20 degrees. So, 
120 times the cosine of 20 degrees gives me a maximum pitch circle radius of 112.76 millimeters. Or excuse me, it gives me the base circle radius. Getting a little bit ahead of myself. So that's my base circle radius. I can now calculate my maximum pitch circle radius. Go back to my calculator here. I'm going to take and square base circle radius. Maybe I'll go ahead and just cut that down to a reasonable number of significant digits. And I need to add that to 180 squared, that's my center distance, times the sine of 20 degrees. squared, and then that whole thing needs to be the square root. So this tells me, therefore, that R A2 is equal to 128.47 millimeters. That is the maximum addendum radius that this gear can have and still not interfere with the pinion. Now, as you recall, uh, in table 6.1, we found that the addendum for a metric gear, A, is equal to the module, which in this case is 8 millimeters. So that says that the actual, I'll go ahead and note this as the max, so the actual addendum radius for gear 2 is going to be equal to the pitch radius, which is 240 divided by 2, or 120, plus the module, which is 8, or 128 millimeters. So this tells us that the gear radius is actually, the addendum radius, is smaller than the maximum addendum radius that we can allow. It's 128 millimeters and we could go up to 128.47 millimeters. So in this case the gear does not interfere with the pinion. As an exercise I'm going to suggest that you go back and calculate the maximum addendum radius for gear 1. What you'll find is that it is significantly larger than the actual radius in this case. And that's a general thing. Whenever you're looking for interference, check the maximum addendum radius of the gear versus its actual addendum radius. Any interference will show up there first. So that concludes sample problem 610. Let's get back to the lecture.